What up guys, it's Tech Tutorials here back with another video and in this video I'll be showing you how to prove the quotient rule that you see in calculus. So in order to prove this quotient rule, we will be we have to use the definition of a derivative. And using the definition of a derivative, we will then prove the quotient rule. So how are we going to prove this? Well, we're going to start using the definition of a derivative. Our function is f of x over g of x, right? So by using the definition of a derivative, we can simply write exactly that. So I'll write f of x plus delta x. This is the definition of derivative, if you guys, if this is what I'm referring to. So f of x plus delta x minus f of x, all right? But then there's also g of x, it's over g of x. So this has to be over g of x plus delta x minus g of x, all right? But then the definition of derivative is still not done yet. We still need to add, we need to put it over delta x. So we need to put the whole thing over delta x. All right, so from here, we need to find a, make these one fraction only. So in order to do that, we can multiply this one with this and this times this, which will give us. I just multiplied the both denominators to get a common denominator. And this brings the both fractions together times g of x. And don't forget all this over delta x. So just from this step, uh, just very quick, we can bring this fraction down, this, this denominator down here. So everything looks a bit more simpler. So just to bring that down, we're going to write, hmm. So... all over, right, make this one fraction, delta x times g of x plus delta x times g of x. All right, so given all this, you can't really do much from here, but now we have to do something in order to manipulate the equation. And in order to manipulate the equation, what we're going to do is we're going to add and subtract something. And what we're going to do is, and we're going to add and subtract something to the numerator. So what we're going to add and subtract is we're going to add f of x, g of x, and we're going to subtract f of x, g of x. All right, so what does this do? This is basically there to manipulate the equation in our favor in order to prove the quotient rule. If you if you noticed, this whole thing is actually equal to zero, so it does not affect the um, this form in any way. So let's add these. All right, so... So I'm just going to recopy the top, but I'm going to add these two on the numerator. So what would this be is I will have the limit as delta x approaches 0, g of x, f of x plus delta x minus f of x, g of x plus delta x. But now we're going to add this, so it's going to be plus f of x, g of x minus f of x, g of x. Just keep that in mind, just to in order to manipulate the equation. And obviously, we're going to put the denom denominator there, so... Alright, so, from here, I'm going to gather terms that has one of this and one of this, and one of this and one of this. So, I can basically take this, subtract this, take this, add this, alright? So, I'll show you why I'm doing this. So, I'll take g of x, f of x plus delta x minus f of x times g of x minus this part so minus f of x times g of x all right and i'll put that over delta x times g of x plus delta x and then g of x all right and then we could add a limit as delta x approaches zero because we could break down the limits all right so i just forgot one thing to do I just have to erase this part and make this a limit as well. I'm just going to do that. So what I'm, I just forgot to write this as limit because I'm breaking the limits down into two. So limit as delta x approaches zero here and adding limit as delta x approaches zero. And I'm going to be using this part, which is negative f of x, g of x plus delta x 
plus f of x g of x. You see why I'm taking these terms as opposed to just taking any random terms. All right, so basically, I'm going to look at them separately. So looking at this part, I see that there's something in common. So what can I take out in common? I can take out the g of x's, right? So I'm going to I'm going to do that. All right, so right off the bat, you can see something here that some things actually do cross out. So the g of x and the g of x over here are going to cross out because it's multiplication, right? So I'm going to cross this part out, part out, this part, and this. So these two are out of the equation. Now I'm going to head on with this part of the of the uh, proof. So limit as delta x approaches zero. So now we need to look at what, what's common in here. What's common in here is I see f of x isn't common. So I'll just take f of x, all right? And I'll multiply that, whatever it's multiplied by. So it's multiplied by negative g of x plus delta x and, and multiplied by a positive g of x. So just for, the, for, for information, just for this, we need to try to put this equation in the form of the definition of a limit, right? So keep in mind that, that the definition of a limit, my apologies, the definition of a derivative is this format. So we're trying to make it in this form. So in order to make it this form, we need to have g of x plus delta x positive, and we need to have this negative. And if we rearrange this, this would be g of x minus g of x plus delta x. So it does not have this form. So how are we going to get this form? is we could put the minus on this side, making this a positive, making this a negative. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put the negative here, negative f of x, and I'm going to take these, uh, I'm going to make this a positive, basically. This is positive, and this is going to become a negative. So this is just going to become a Yeah, right there. So this follows the format of the definition of a derivative. So now, if we can't move anything there, now we need to start playing with the equation. So we see a little format of the definition of a derivative in the first part, right? So this is the part, this is the part that I'm talking about means the first part. So I'm going to put the limit, I'm just copying it. So one way I can rewrite this part is I can put 1 over g of x plus delta x multiplied with f with well limit as delta x approaches zero multiplied with f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x so does this remind you of something this does in fact remind you of the definition of a derivative of a function so the definition of derivative of the f function is f prime x so this in turn will be f prime x so uh, let's work with this part. What about this? As delta x approaches 0, we can make this part 0. So this part actually turns 0, which gives us limit. Well, actually not limit. It gives us 1 over g of x, because the limit already approaches 0 at delta x, g of x, times the, the limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x, which gives us f prime x. All right, so that's the first part. But now let's look at this part over here. All right, so this part, we can actually break this function up into a different way. Just to make it look simpler for us, we can make the limit as delta x approaches 0. We can do 1 over g of x plus delta x, which is exactly like we did on that part. And then we can do multiplied by the limit as delta x approaches 0. And we could do negative, well, we could do negative f of x over g of x. Finally, we could do the limit, delta x approaches 0, of g of x plus delta x minus g of x over delta x. Right? I have all my denominators on the bottom. I still have my numerators on the top. All right. So does this look familiar? This is actually the derivative, the definition of a derivative. So the definition of a derivative, 
Our function gives you this. So this is the derivative of the g function. So this we already know. We got this covered. But over here is delta x approaching 0. Well, is there a delta x here? So there is no delta x here. So the limit of delta x does not approach 0 in this case because there's no delta x assigned in this in this place. But over here, we can actually do something like before. We can take this delta x and this will approach 0. So to rewrite this, just to write this part. So to write this part of, of the equation, this will be 1 over g of x, right? And I can multiply this by the negative f of x over g of x and multiply that by, what is this? This is the derivative of the g function. This whole thing is the derivative of the g function according to the definition of a derivative, which is right here. So now, one of the final steps, I just put them together. So these were added actually over here. I forgot to put this down, but these were actually added. So they were added. So to put them together, just to... All right, just to make it look a bit more simpler than what I wrote recently uh, above. So, so what to do with this? Well, I want to put them as one fraction, so I could do f prime x over g of x, just to make it look simpler, plus, plus negative f of x times g prime x, all right, just multiplying the numerators, and then I multiply the denominators, which is g, g of x times g of x, which is g of x squared. Basically, we're done here, but what we need to do is to make this denominator like this denominator, so we need a common denominator, right? And to get a common denominator, we just have to multiply this side by g of x, because if we multiply this by this side by g of x, this is also g of x squared, so they will both be common, and the top will satisfy. So plus... I'm not going to put plus anymore because there's a minus right there. So I'll just do minus f of x times g prime x over g of x squared. And just to put them together, 